kind of a quiet story, but this is happening and it's working. I cannot not mention KPLC, uh, which followed a fairly interesting model, which is a which went private at some point, which is listed on the Kenya Stock Exchange, which developed and managed a very successful IPP program um, until recently. If we keep those two things in mind, uh, one would be forgiven to conclude that you know the future is bright, which it is, uh, and that everything is fine. But I must also be honest with you, and I should also address some of the challenges we are seeing in the region. Um, well, first of all, the region is very diverse in terms of challenges, so there is no one-size-fits-all in here, but there are a common set of challenges we still have to address. Um, the first common challenge to all the countries in the region is access. Access, access, access. Uh, there is some interesting innovation happening to solve that problem, but we are still below the access rates we should be having, uh, especially when one thinks about uh, interconnectivity or connections in rural areas. The second challenge we all have to manage right now is m the macroeconomic headwinds and the downturn, the downturn in the commodity cycle. It's temporary, but it's not going to go away. There will be ebbs and flows, but we are now in a difficult situation, and a number of countries are feeling the strain. Now, in terms of specific challenges, uh, when we look at the region from you know, 10,000 feet and we try to make sense of it, uh, there are a few countries, we have to be very honest, who are still facing very, very basic challenges that need to be resolved. Um, I hope I will be forgiven, but I cannot not mention Tanzania, where the situation is critical, is getting quite critical by the day. Um, I can only speak for some of our clients that are facing very difficult situation, not being unpaid, and with probably, at, as of now, not a clear visibility on the path forward. Uh, lots of load shedding. Um, Low, access, low quality of service, and still some really deep existential struggles to, to, to resolve. Um, but there are also, um, oh sorry, one other challenge which I think we should mention uh, here is the basic cost reflectivity of tariffs. Um, it's work in progress. In some places we are getting slow, slowly there, but it is still not something which is an issue that has been resolved. And I cannot, I cannot emphasize enough how this is a fundamental issue. If we do not resolve that issue, we'll be talking in, those in such conferences for the next 30, 40 years, and we'll be wringing our hands because nothing, or the pace of progress, is not at the level that it should be at. We must address that. It's a difficult issue. There are affordability issues, there are social issues, there are economic issues, but we cannot continue with sectors whole energy sectors that can only survive with subsidies and repeated subsidies, if that. Moving from that, what we see is quite, in terms of other challenges, the ones we are seeing uh, in other countries are kind of what we call the second level challenges. In a number of places, luckily, uh, some of the basic issues have been resolved. Um, I'm very happy uh, when I hear that in Kenya right now, we have moved from a situation of power shortage to a situation of power excess. Um, we don't have a problem with the immediate demand balance um, equation right now. Uh, that is fabulous and that is great. So the question then becomes that of the second level of, um, of reforms. One, I'm not going to be talking uh, at length about it, but there is one which I think we must all be very candid um, about. That is the process of managing the ambitions. In too many places, Big, ambition pla ambitious plans are being announced and not executed and not delivered on. And so that is okay f and for a first moment, a second time, a third time. But we know that investors take notice, power partners take notice, and we must all hold ourselves to better accountability in terms of the plans we announce, the ambitions we put forward, making sure that those are realistic, that we deliver them before moving to the next stage. Um, a good example for that, and I think it's a good moment, is to talk about solar, for example. Um, let me just say one thing. A lot of people are focusing on the results and the tariffs on Zambia uh, and the bids, and okay, that, that is all great, and we're more than happy to have that discussion. I think to me, the achievement that I want to commend IDC, Zesco, and the Zambian authorities for is not really that one. What I want to commend them for is having launched a process which in less than seven months 
has led to an award of actual projects which are going to close and to be executed right now. That changes the equation because here, you will forgive me, I will not name names, but in too many countries, policies are announced, ambitions are announced, and yet we keep meeting good developers, we keep meeting good sponsors who are investing a lot of time and a lot of energy, a lot of money um, in trying to move the agenda forward, but yet with limited results because of the uncertainty surrounding the actual execution on ambitious plan. We must do better on this front. We must do better on this front, collectively and all of us. It's all about the process. A credible, well-managed process is what we need to hold ourselves accountable to collectively. And we, IFC being who we are, we bear our part of that responsibility and we commit to be doing better on that front. The last one, I think, and I'll end here, uh, is that um, we still have in a couple of cases uh, in a number of countries to handle now the complex or more difficult issues that come with greater interconnectivity. I think it has been mentioned, but um, in Eastern Africa and in Southern Africa, there is really a solid foundation for interconnection. Countries are trading together. It will grow. There are more plans coming in, and between the Eastern Africa Power Pool, the Southern Africa Power Pool, and the entire development community, we're hopeful that we will see some progress on that front. Um, but then that is the second generation reforms of you know, the proper market structures that will enable those sectors to grow on a sustainable basis. I'll stop here. Thank you very much and happy to address any questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Yasa. I warned you at the beginning of this that these people who are here can talk the whole day on energy in Africa. So it's going to be very difficult to moderate. Uh, uh, this, but I had I had left the, the best for for us, uh, the only lady that we have in our panel, and I'll talk a little about her because she may not be she is very moderate. She may not talk about herself. Uh, Dr. Emma Sasoro okay. Vagam. <laughs> um, you will not believe it. She has got uh, a PhD in petroleum engineering, environment, and geophysics. And she was a presidential candidate in Madagascar in the last general election. Okay. Over to uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, 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 due to the time, probably, I, will, uh, I have a lot to talk about. But uh, um, for the time, I will shorten it for three minutes. Uh, well, I'm originally from Madagascar, but I lived and educated uh, and worked uh, for several companies in the United States. And uh, after accumulating the experiences and the network and money, I decided to go back to develop the natural resources of Madagascar, which are very, very abundant to, to help the country. So I uh, created um, uh, an oil company to develop the, uh, the oil and gas resource of Madagascar, and I created an energy company uh, to develop the, uh, also the natural resources. So the focus of today is energy. So I will just focus the highlights. I have a lot to talk about, so I invite you to talk with me because I have quite a bit of experience in Madagascar that I would like to share with you about. I will only point out the, the very uh, critical issue that I think we need to address. And I apologize from the beginning if I step on somebody's toes because this has... These things have to be mentioned in order to improve the, the situation. Um, the Madagascar decided to, uh, uh, to do the, um, uh, every project in Madagascar have to go through a uh, bid round. And the bid round, unfortunately, takes too long. I participated in two of these bid rounds, uh, the, only two so far. One was in the beginning of January. And the other one was just happened in May. The bid round that we started in January 2015, as of today, have not been awarded. We spent quite a bit of time traveling back and forth, visit the country, collect uh, everything. And unfortunately, as of today, more than one year and a half have not been awarded. I think the friend uh, from IFC actually uh, hinted on that. We need to be effective, transparent, and uh, dependable. And, but meanwhile, during this process, 
There have been projects awarded to a few companies. And so we are quite, I say, what is going on? We thought we need to do this uh, bid round, but yet there are companies awarded on the site. And the, uh, the uh, message that I want to give is here we, the Western um, investor, we are with the money. I will invite each one of us, when we go to Africa, especially in a poor country, to bring along with us our know-how, especially our transparency, and also the respect of human rights and the democracy, because that hasn't happened yet in Madagascar. So many uh, projects awarded to Western country, and most of them are awarded behind door. So that's the message. So know about the, uh, the Madagascar situation. Only 4% of the rural people uh, have access to uh, the electricity. 12% uh, on the uh, city have access to property. However, we have 360 uh, high renewable projects in Madagascar. The, that's as far as I know, 360, ranging from 100 kilowatt to uh, 550 megawatts, and they are all over the country. We have renewable. The last bid round was 340 project was in the last bid round for solar, and more and more are coming. And during this, uh, this, um, uh, it, okay, what another thing? Um, also, want to bring out the tariff, which is mentioned by an individual. It's a huge issue. Okay. The reason is because the people in Madagascar cannot afford the, the price. The, of course, the tariff has to reflect the price. However, if we want to uplift the, the country, we need to uh, come with uh, some, uh, an evaluation analysis to come up with a perfect price that will be affordable and sustainable for the local community. In Madagascar specifically, for example, the uh, government subsidized almost all the electricity in Madagascar. And it is a spiral death. If this continues, the country will bankrupt, which is very close to that anyway. So the, um, the situation, most of the uh, power generation in Madagascar from fossil, as we all, we all know, the fossil, the cost is uh, 30 cents or 40 cents or even could go to 60 cents if the, the barrel was so high to, for a kilowatt. But the people in Madagascar can only pay below 10, uh, uh, 10 cents per kilowatt. So the, the government keeps subsidizing this. And the reason I bring this up, because it's very important for the investor to have a guarantee. And when the investor go to Madagascar, they always ask, what kind of guarantee for our investment? or uh, the public utility, which is the state on uh, utility, Dirama, is, has the worst credit in the entire, all the world I get. And so it's, even though they write, they, you have this PPA with the uh, Dirama, with the public utility, it's not, it's not going to be bankable. Well, you need something for the investor. You need some kind of guarantee. So today, we have the panel here we need to come up with some kind of, uh, we need to...